hello everyone in this session we will discuss about continuation of the compositors in the last session we will discuss about the the introduction of the controllers and compositors so in that what we what we get the controllers and compositors are very much useful to in order to make it the first thing is to make system stability and for unstable system the second point is if the system is stable in order to improve the response improve the response also those are useful so for these two conditions the compensators and controllers are very much useful so here we will deeply discuss about the compensators here a compensator is a electrical network which adds a finite pole or finite zero to system so name itself compensator means it is electrical network simply a network okay which adds a finite pole and finite zero it may be add finite pole or finite zero to system yes so by adding this finite pole and finite zero that will change the characteristics of the system so here we have different types of compensators those are one lag compensator two lead compensator three lag lead compensator four lead lag compensators okay these are the different different compensators so for each and every co every compensator and the applications of the compensator we will discuss in this session so in this the first compensator we will use as the lead compensator here look at the lead compensator so lead means it should be generally we know that for capacitor you know that current always leads voltage what is this meaning if the voltage is some zero degrees phase angle the current must and should be the 90 degrees then it is called the capacitor current leads the voltage same that here also the lead compensator here here also look at here if the sinusoidal input is applied to a network it produces sinusoidal steady state output having phase lead with respect to the input then the network is called the lead network look at here so we have some input that input is sinusoidal he mentioned the input is the sinusoidal so for example this input is the sinusoidal like this yes and this is the input if you are applying this input we will get the output so output is leading leading means it should be so it should be started at 90 degrees for example I assume that the 90 degrees then the V naught is like this so the V naught is 90, some leading angle with 5 then the network this complete network is called the leading network this complete network is called the leading network the lead network speed of the transient response so always look at the lead network means it gives the speed of the transient response so before steady state reaching the response you know that the steady transient response and it increase the margin of stability so it will increase the margin of stability so by using the lead network we have two things one is it improves the transient response the second one is it increase the margin of stability so this is about the lead compensator and we have in this lead compensator generally we can shortcut we will use some shortcut form that is lead is nothing but the high lead is nothing but the high so lead is four letters and high is also four letters so it will improve okay so now for example if we find out the relation between the input and output input and output is like this so generally i will write the relation between the output and input like this so output is if i am using the current output is some current into some current into r naught because the same current is flowing i assume i assume same current is flowing for example i so now i will write the relation between the current and voltage is like this the output v naught of s is so I directly I am writing in the S terms that is the current I into R2 of S current I into R2 and what about VI 
and input voltage is input current into total resistance total resistance is this is parallel combination of resistance and this is the resistor so i will write this is r2 plus r1 is parallelly combined with capacitor parallelly combined with capacitor so parallelly combined with the capacitor so if you are doing modification i i will be cancelled then we have this is the r2 and what about remaining r2 is here plus so by doing the calculation we will get r1 into 1 by so if you take the c1 every time 1 by sc1 by r1 plus 1 by sc1 okay so finally if you do if you are doing the calculation you will get like this so those that is like this so you did the modifications but it will take the same that's why i will directly write it v naught by vi of s is so by doing the calculation finally we will get r2 by r1 plus r2 into 1 plus sc r1 by 1 plus r2 by r1 plus r2 into sc1 and r1 so finally by doing v naught of s by vi of s we will get this term with 1 plus sc r1 and 1 plus r2 by r1 plus sc r1 so let we should take some assumptions let assume generally whenever resistor and capacitor is parallelly connected we can take it is the multiplication of these r1 and c1 is the tau tau is generally the time constant generally we can take it tau is time constant if the inductor is there then tau equal r by l is there right here just take this is the r1 c1 is the tau and next take it some constant this is assuming this is some constant this value is the some constant because here we have it is repeated at the two positions this is the one position this is the another position here i will take the alpha equal to r2 by r1 plus r2 r2 by r1 plus r2 so substitute in this network in this lead, in this lead network so the lead network is consisting of like this that is v naught of s by v a of s is equal to replace it the alpha and 1 plus so r1 c1 is s into tau s into tau plus 1 plus alpha and s into again tau s into again tau so we'll get this so finally alpha 1 plus s tau by 1 plus s tau alpha so generally this alpha value is less value why because this is the r2 is there and r1 r2 is there why because because r2 is generally the output r1 is generally some source input generally output resistance is very very high compared with the input that's why alpha value is approximately 0.1 generally alpha value is approximately the 0.1 so whenever the alpha value is less value it will get some attenuation so so it gets attenuation what is the meaning of attenuation attenuation means the output signal uh, signal strength will be decreases that means for example if you are giving the 20 is the signal if the uh, attenuation is there then automatically this may be the 10 the signal magnitude will be decreases so to avoid this so it is it, is, it will become attenuation opposite of amplifier attenuation is inversely proportional to the amplification so to avoid this attenuation to decrease to increase the gain so we should use we should use we should add a amplifier so we will write to avoid attenuation to avoid attenuation 
we will add a amplifier we will add a amplifier we will add a amplifier so that is here whenever we have a lead network you should be add one amplifier so that amplifier value should be you can take the amplifier value is you should multiply with the 1 by alpha then you will get the amplified output so by using that we will write the final transfer function value is like this the final transfer function value equal to, so here alpha is there and you will multiply with again alpha so alpha 1 plus s tau by 1 plus s tau alpha into 1 by alpha both alphas will be cancelled so finally we will get 1 plus s tau by 1 plus alpha into s tau 1 plus alpha tau by 1 plus alpha into s tau this is the final transfer function of the lead network final transfer function of the lead network what is transfer function you know that already the transfer function equal to v naught of s by v i of s that is 1 plus we will write tau into s by 1 plus alpha into tau into s so this is the relation between the output as well as the input in the form of s domain in the form of s domain okay so now we should take we should take some analysis so if you look at this transfer function we have one pole and one zero okay first you look at the zero so we have a, we should find out the zero how we will find out one plus tau s is equals to zero from this s equal to minus one by tau so minus one by tau what about pole pole is the denominator from this one plus alpha into tau into s is equals to zero from this we will get s equal to minus 1 by alpha tau so this is alpha tau is generally this is low value but this is the high generally this is high this is tau is this is the low value and this is the low that's why it is nearer to imaginary axis simple near near to imaginary axis it is near to real axis as well. so not real for far to imaginary axis far to imaginary axis so by using this we will make it we will make it a we will make it the pole zero configuration here so here this is the imaginary and this is the real real axis imaginary axis one real axis so here so initially the nearer to we have the pole is there this is the sorry zero is there generally so we have the zero that is the value of minus one by tau so look at here that is the value of the minus one by tau this is the nearer to imaginary axis this is the zero and what about the pole pole is somewhere here it is minus one by alpha tau pole is somewhere here this is the minus one by alpha tau okay so then why why it is happen the reason is here alpha value is low value that is the point one due to that the zero is nearer to imaginary axis and this is the pole is like this then the always root locus travels from pole to zero pole to zero okay so this is about some information regarding the lead compensator lead compensator so lead compensator is like this and if you find out the lead compensator transfer function this is the value if you draw the if you take the pole and zero configuration this is the lead compensator i hope all of you understand the session thank you